Uh, why do you think Sony decided to go for a significant GPU upgrade for only a modest CPU upgrade in PS5 Pro, given that it seems to be the CPU that's stopping many newer and future titles from running at 60 FPS on the base console, which I would imagine a lot of quote unquote pro gamers are looking for, and that the new PlayStation machine learning upscaling will likely help to increase resolutions anyway? Uh, John? It's probably the best they could do given the current hardware landscape and what what AMD's doing, right? Like, I th I feel like massively upgrading the CPU would have been more difficult, given what we know there. And also, I I, I don't think frame rate alone is the issue. I mean, I, th I think the bigger problem, I think image quality has become a huge problem this generation with a lot of GPU limited scenarios. The fact that we've seen so many games dipping down to like 720p, I or think lower. that or lower, that kind of took me by surprise i have to admit i didn't think we'd be seeing resolutions that low so uh, i think that that kind of explains some of the logic there and just wanting to get into machine learning i don't know based on <laughs> it's tricky you're right we have seen issues but i think we're always you'll always see games that don't run as well as you'd like no matter what the hardware is right yeah. 60 frames per second remains a design choice if you want to do 60 you can build the game around 60 and it's just not everyone is necessarily capable or willing to make the cuts necessary to reach that point. And I think just upgrading a CPU alone isn't going to suddenly magically solve that. The CPUs this gen are dramatically better than what we had last gen, and it's already becoming an issue again. Yeah. And honestly, a lot of developers I've spoken with, I said this last time, was like they were they're genuinely okay with the CPU performance on these new machines. It's just about what you do with it, right? And I, I think there is some problems with like if you're if you're doing Unreal Engine game and you're not managing the CPU stuff well, you can end up in that situation where you're heavily single threaded and, and then even then you also see problems on PCs, which is not good. So it's not just that the consoles need more powerful CPUs, it's that developers really need to think a little bit more carefully about how they're using their CPU resources. Because it also matters for PC gamers. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh thoughts, Oliver? Yeah, and we're seeing that with titles like Dragon's Dogma 2 or Baldur's Gate 3 that are yeah, demanding geez. they're demanding everywhere. They're not just demanding on console. They're demanding yeah, on yeah, yeah. you know a 7800X 3D. There's no liberation <laughs> from the perils of yeah. of CPU bound performance. Um personally I th apart from frame gen. Uh, well, yeah, frame, frame gen. Yeah. That's it. Go to 30 FPS and frame gen to 60. Maybe that's the the path we're all <laughs> we're all headed towards. But um, I think Ugh. probably a big part of it is going to be compatibility and simplicity reasons for developers. Because when you look at Zen 4, you've got like an eight core CCX. You've got a different cache hierarchy with more L2, more L3. It's you know it, it's it involves different optimizations to run code well on that on that platform. That takes more work, and I imagine Sony just didn't want the additional complication for developers on that end. And then there's also the question of area efficiency, right? Zen 2 is is a smaller design than Zen 3, than Zen 4. That's also very important. Uh, there, there's also some question about like what IP works. So Zen 4, I don't know if Zen 4 is on a 7 nanometer or 6 nanometer class pro process that, that, that I think is on 5, so it would take work to port it to 6, assuming the PS5 Pro is on 6. Zen 3 would potentially work in that scenario, but Zen 3 isn't as much of an uplift. And of course, you have the area questions and then the questions of developer optimization. And it just becomes, I think, much simpler and much easier and much more cost efficient to say, we're going to go with the design that you guys have been using for five years developing your games <laughs> instead of a new design. That's just my my thoughts. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Ultimately, a console is always a fixed, you know, it's a, it's a fixed platform and it's, you know, its capabilities are kind of hailing from when it was designed, right? And uh, that basically, that means that from a development perspective, it's exactly as John says, games typically target 60 FPS or target 30 FPS because those are the, you know, the dividing factors on a 60 hertz and indeed 120 hertz display. Um, so, you know, if you want a more complex game, you're going to run at a lower frame rate. It's, it's that simple. Um, there is obviously optimization over time, which, you know, you, you can see some amazing stuff being done on the base PS4. Um, you know, years after it was actually designed. But the point is that, you know, it's it's a fixed console. And if you're going to produce an offshoot of that, it kind of makes sense to make it as developer friendly as possible. And, 
you're not going to double CPU performance on an enhanced console that's produced a few years later. It's just not really going to happen. So where can you double performance? Well, GPUs are inherently more parallel. You can add extra CUs and automatically gain extra performance. Um, obviously, it does look as though Sony has come up against the limit of the manufacturing processes enabling uh, enabling fewer CUs to be added relatively compared to PS4 Pro. So they've gone for a machine learning upscaling route. The other thing to bear in mind here is, yes, we've seen a lot of CPU limited games, but um, it, as, again, if it's a given that it takes four years to develop a console, Sony wouldn't have had that insight when they first started the design um, or even when they finished the design. <laughs> so, yeah, that's kind of the way it is. I'm trying to think of, you know, going back to, say, 2020, it just finished PS5, they're moving on to PS5 Pro, possibly when they saw the original Unreal Engine 5 demos from that time period, there might have been an inkling that there was, you know, an, uh, potentially an issue with CPU at that point, because those early demos were really CPU heavy, certainly on the PC side of things. Um, but beyond that, you know, it's basically what can be done with a set budget, you know, and it is easier to scale up GPU than it is to uh, to scale up the CPU in a meaningful way, that is. So I think that's basically the reason why they did that. And it's, you know, the same sort of arguments were heard with PS4 Pro, right? You know, why aren't they moving on to Zen, Zen 1 at the time? And... Um, yeah, that probably was a more compelling argument. And the response back then from Mark Cerny was, well, it's about compatibility. Um, and, and that's kind of that, really. Compatibility, the area cost, as Oliver says. Um, you know, if you're doubling your transistors or whatever, you want double the performance. And if you're not getting that, you're kind of like wondering whether it's worth it. So there's a lot of uh, sort of contributing factors to why the PS5 Pro CPU seemingly is what it is.